Um, so the, the, the Mandelbrot set is defined by the function z equals z squared plus c. Um, and when you square a complex number, well, first of all, first of all, a complex number is a point in this plane. So say this point is, you know, this is b, say, and this is a. This point is represented by um, a plus b i. And i is the square root of negative 1, which is not really possible. That's why it's called imaginary. <laughs> so um, if you multiply two complex numbers together, um, It's not really that simple. You have to do like the actual multiplication out. When you get is a a c plus you know I don't know if I should do it all out. Uh, it'll, it'll take a little bit of time. But you get this sort of a mapping function essentially that's not really linear. It's not really that predictable what it's going to do. So you have this this point here. And OK, so the way the algorithm works, you take a point on the complex plane. That, that gets, c gets the value of that point. And then z starts off at 0, just, just, enough, just 0, 0. And you apply this function a bunch of times. So say we apply this function once. Uh, z equals z squared plus c. So 0 squared is nothing plus c. So the first iteration, z gets the value c. So z is going to be there. And you apply the function again. With, uh, with, and this z is now the new z that, that we just got. So z equals z squared plus c. So z squared, you apply the squaring function. And you add c. You add the real in imaginary components of C. So it just maps this point to some other point over here, say. Um, and then you, you then you apply this again, and again, and again, and again. So apply it here, here, here. So I don't know if I'm going too fast, but like we get this point after <coughs> applying the function to this. So now this is the new z. And then this the new z loops back around and so we apply now z squared plus c. c is always going to be the initial point, but z will be changing. And it maps to here, for example. And now the new point is z. You go z squared plus c again, and it maps over here. So uh, I wrote a little applet that demonstrates th this mapping and what it actually looks like. Yeah. Z can be anywhere. Z can be anywhere. The starting point could be anywhere. Yeah, but when you actually run the algorithm, you uh, you only go from negative two to two. Uh, negative two, two, because that's the only region in which interesting things happen with this fractal. So I, I didn't finish explaining the algorithm. So. Say a point in here, a point that's very close to the to the origin zero zero. What it tends to do is spiral inward as you iterate it. But a point out here, what it tends to do, well, definitely a point outside of two. What it tends to do when you apply this function is to get mapped out here and to get mapped like over there and just go like really far away. So that w what we do to to, to render uh, the Mandelbrot set is apply the function a number of times. And if the point eventually goes outside the circle at the origin of radius 2, sorry, it's a bad circle. If the point eventually goes outside of the circle, we stop performing the function. Because we know that after it gets outside, it's just going to keep going forever out. It has escaped. It's called the escape iterations, the number of iterations it takes 
to escape outside of the circle. It's the escape operations. So what we do is we color the point depending on its escape iteration. So when we actually, and the other part of it is, if it never escapes, we color it black. To actually test that, we just iterate a certain number of times, say like 500 times or like 70 times. And if it hasn't escaped after that many iterations, we sort of assume that it's never going to. It's not valid, so it's, a, it's an approximation to the actual set, but we have to do it to, to render the actual thing. And we color it black. So when we actually render it, what we do is go through each pixel on the screen and apply this algorithm. So for this point, this point becomes C. And we iterate, test, iterate, test, iterate, test. And if the test, what we're testing is if, if it's outside of the circle. If it's outside of the circle, we assign it a color based on the number of iterations it took. And we do that for each one. So we keep going and say this one, for example, it's going to spiral in. It's, a, uh, it's not a continuous line. It just applies the function and probably spirals in. So that's, that's never going to escape, so we're going to color it black. And this, um, this applet is excellent at showing this. So I, I implemented this algorithm in Java, and um, it's going to output the the point, and it's going to draw the lines between each point. So say it starts here, it's going to draw a line here, 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 here. So what we're going to see is really cool. So this is, this is what we get in the end. And as I move my mouse around, it does these tests. So here, we can see that there's only one iteration. The one iteration gets the color light blue. And then here, there are two iterations. And they're listed up there at one, too. Um, so you can see all the way wherever it's this color, there are only two iterations before the point gets outside of this circle. Two, 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 I think. So as we go deeper in, there, it just takes three iterations, four or five, six, seven, 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 a lot of iterations. So all the points that, that are colored, they do eventually escape. But all the points that are black don't escape. And so the patterns that are inside are really interesting. See these in the middle, they just sort of spiral in, keep going. Um, the ones here, there's some looping pattern. See, the function loops back on itself. So it's sort of recursive. Like I don't really understand how it's recursive, but it sort of is. So if we go out to this other nub, the second nub out, it gets this it's really cool shape. So what we could do is zoom in, actually, on this. It redraws it. So it's calculating this algorithm for every single point as we speak. It's doing it really fast. Um, so we can see all these really cool shapes that generate this fractal. And it's just, just crazy. So we can sort of see the recursion here. Like it looks like there's definitely some recursive thing going on. And the recursive part of this is the fact that um, z gets applied to itself. Z of it, like the nth z is equal to the z that came before it squared plus c. And then this z is reframed as the old z and this reframing and reapplying of the function is what makes it recursive. So, yeah, it sort of makes sense. Let's just go through the code quickly, and then I want to uh, show some really cool things. Oh, where'd it go? So, yeah, in the black part, it just recurses infinitely. And the code itself is not recursive, but the mapping function, again, is what's recursive. So yeah, the black parts are in the set. So the, the real 